Chapter 3 is going to deal with scientific measurement. And there are a few new skills that you have to learn as we go along. Some of them may be reviewed to you. Let's look first at scientific notation. You certainly may have been introduced to scientific notation um, in math class or even in the eighth grade. It's taking a number and multiplying it by a power of 10. Turn a number that has uh, a large number of zeros in it to something a little easier to deal with. In chemistry, you deal with incredibly large or incredibly small numbers. Um, one milliliter of water contains this many water molecules. And in order to do calculations in chemistry, we don't want to have to write out all of these zeros. We want to turn this number and these part, this part here of the number we want to keep, but we want to put these zeros as a power of 10. So again, we're going to write this number as 3.355 times 10 to the 22nd power. The rules for writing numbers in scientific notation are pretty simple. You write the number first, and then you write power of 10. You want to make sure that you always take the number and put the power of 10. It is not 3 cubed. It is 3 powers of 10, 3 zeros behind that number, powers of 10. So again, making sure you're following the rules for correct scientific notation, you are allowed in your number only one digit in front of the decimal point. You're not to write 13.4 times the power of 10 or 134. Again, 1.34. One number only in front of the decimal and then the power of 10. When you're writing that power of 10, if you have a positive exponent, then your number is greater than 1. So 3 times 10 to the third power, again, automatically, with time, you'll recognize that as 1,000. But you certainly need to begin seeing that as a number larger than 1. If your exponent is negative, 3 times 10 to the negative 3, then you know that your number is less than 1. Again, you can see 1, 2, 3, that number is less than 1. So let's do a little practice. If this doesn't seem familiar to you, we'll certainly practice enough in class. If you understand it from what I'm saying, then you're probably good to go. If there's no decimal in the number, you assume that that decimal is at the end of the number. Then you're simply going to move it to its proper location, which again, you're allowed one digit in front of the decimal place. And you're going to count how many places you've moved that decimal. So we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 powers of 10. So 6 times 10 to the seventh power. So you can see this is a lot faster, neater, and easier to read. Obviously, with the positive exponent, we know this is a number greater than 1. You take the decimal here to one number in front of the decimal. We move this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. Notice we're putting to the negative 6 power. Common sense will tell you, again, if this is a small number, less than 1, which this is, then your exponent here has to be negative. What you're really saying with this is 5 times 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth, 6 times. Here you were saying 6 times 10 times 10 times 10 all the way up to 7 times. So again, make sure you're clear on those exponent signs. This is a number greater than 1, so even without thinking, I know my power of 10 is going to be positive. I move the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So it's a power of 5, and the number becomes 1.25 times 10 to the fifth power. Again, you either feel very comfortable with this, or with time, you'll feel very comfortable when we practice it in class. For the most part, you're going to be 
using your calculator to do these calculations and it will do all the scientific notation for you. But I want you to be able to do some simple calculations without a calculator. So let's look at the rules for that. If you are multiplying two numbers in scientific notation, you will add their exponents. So let's take two simple calculations, 3 times 10 to the third power times 2 times 10 to the negative fifth power. So first, multiply your numbers like you normally would. That gives you 6. Now let's deal with the power of 10. You've got 3 and a negative 5. To add the exponent, it's going to be 3 plus your negative 5, which gives you negative 2. When you divide your numbers, you subtract your exponents. So let's go ahead and take this number, since it's already here. 6 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 2 times 10 to the 4th. So again, go ahead and divide your numbers. 2 into 6 is 3. And then deal with 10. You subtract your exponents, and it's always numerator minus denominator. So negative 2 minus a 4. So that's going to give you a negative 6 power. Certainly, that's pretty much all I expect you to do without your calculator, just making sure you have the basic skills. When you add and subtract numbers, you actually have to turn them into equal exponents, which is kind of a pain in the neck, and I certainly will not make you do that because your calculator will do that for you. Using your calculator is something we're going to practice in class, but I would like you to do the following and make sure you can at least do this rudimentary calculation before you come in. First, find your scientific notation key on your calculator. It is the EE key. Okay? And every time you push it, it means a power of 10. Remember, you hit this key only when doing scientific notation. Don't hit times 10, even though we say 3 times 10 to the third. You're going to put in 3, and then you're going to hit the E key, and then raise it to a power of 3. We don't write this on paper, but that's what it looks like on the calculator. So don't hit times 10. Don't hit the square key. Don't hit 10 to the X. Don't hit the caret key. Make sure you know only to use this key. No matter how many times I say this, somebody always hits the wrong key and wonders why their answer is wrong. If you put in 6 times 10 to the 8th correctly, your calculator will show this, which you interpret and write on paper as this. Again, with time, this will be second nature to you. So try a problem, get your calculator out, and put this number into your calculator. If you need to pause the show, pause it, put in 6.02, 6.02, hit your E key, which means times 10. When you hit that, this shows up, and then hit 23rd. And it's going to look like this, but this is what we're interpreting. I then want you to hit the multiplication key and multiply it by this number, 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. So you're going to put in 2.5, hit your exponent key, and then hit your negative sign and your 5. So that's what it's going to look like. That is what you have put into your calculator. When you hit the Enter key, this should come out on your calculator, but it's not going to look like this. And again, there may be some more decimal places depending on how many you have set, but it's going to look like 1.5 E 19. You cannot write it this way. You have to write it on paper this way. So when we meet in class, we'll practice with our calculator and without our calculator. Um, if you really feel confused about this and aren't sure, please let me know so I will not think that you feel more comfortable with this than you do. Format for calculations is very important. When you're writing your calculations out and your numbers out, you need to follow the correct format for science, which is not the same as what you may have been taught in math. You absolutely must place a zero in front of any number less than one. That is to make sure that we don't think that this number got erased or that you simply didn't uh, 
have any information uh, to put there or you lost that information, you need to put a zero. It's hard for you to get used to that, I know, because I can see students struggle with it. They're constantly putting down things like this instead of that. So I'll remind you um, frequently by correcting and putting that zero for you, but be clear on why we do that. The next thing you want to make sure is that you always place a unit at the end of your number. In math, you don't really deal with units as much, so you have all these unitless numbers. But in science, numbers without units have no meaning. 1.89 what? Elephants, giraffes, million dollars? We need to know what you're talking about. So always put a unit. 1.89 grams has meaning. 1.89 milliliters has meaning. 1.89 means nothing, so don't forget those units. When you're showing a format for your calculations, when you're multiplying numbers, you don't put the time sign. You put your numbers in parentheses. Okay. So 3 times 10 to the second multiplied by 2 times 10 to the negative 8. This is your format. Then put your answer. So for multiplication, put those parentheses. For division, you don't show the divide sign. You don't show this. We don't want to see your operations. You simply say 10 grams divided by 2 milliliters. If you want to put a slant on it, that's perfectly fine. But this is division. So this is how you will show. And your unit will show that as well, grams per milliliter. So again, multiplication shows those parentheses, division, you draw a line. You need to show all your series of additions with uh, a horizontal calculation. I don't want to see 3 plus 2 plus 1 because we're not doing any arithmetic. Your calculator is going to give you the answer. So 3 plus 2 plus 1 and then put your answer in with the correct unit. The last thing you want to do once you're finished with your calculation is to box in that final answer. So that draws the attention to your final answer. Rounding rules. We are going to look at those right now. You're not really sure what significant figures are, so we'll worry about that later. But again, your basic rounding rules, you look one number. Okay, Look at the number behind the one you're rounding, just one number behind it. If it is 0 to 4, you don't change your number. If it's 5 to 9, you make it one bigger. So 3.46. If you're trying to round to the tenths place, you look one number behind it. This will make that round up. 3.42, look one number behind the 4, that would leave it at 3.4. Significant figures are a huge part of our rounding rules and our chemistry math rules, but we will get to those later. Just make sure you're clear on this basic rounding rule. That's it right now for basic format and scientific notation. Your next uh, podcast will be on significant figures.